everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing great and if you're new here, hi! My name is Elizabeth. Well, it's another week gone. It's Friday! Well, before we get to this case, if you like our video, please hit the like, subscribe, and the bell. We just thank you for all your help and we appreciate everything you guys do. The Missing Asha Kramer's Case Asha was born in Hawaii on May 2nd, 1989. Her parents are Russell and Jeannie. She does have an older sister though as well. In 1991, the family decided to move to Red Cliff, Australia. Asha was a citizen of both United States and Australia. Then in 1996, her parents had gotten a divorce. Her mother had got a job in a remote community as a nurse. Jeannie had described the town as unsafe and Asha was scared to live there. Jeannie's family does have a family history of bipolar disorder, schizophrenia. She did fear for her daughter's safety. When Asha was 12 or maybe 13 years old, she was stopped by a police officer and he had asked her about the violent crime that just happened in the area. This had scared her so much that she did not leave her house after that. Her mother thought that it would be best for her to go to a boarding school. She really adapted very well there. Well, academically, she had got into sports. After she had graduated, she went back to live with her mother. In 2011, her and her sister had moved to San Francisco, California. It was June when they moved. It was not long after they had moved, but a few weeks, that Asha had met a man named Jamel Gale. It was not long that they had become a couple. They did struggle to live financially in San Francisco, California. They thought maybe moving to Albanian, California would be best, so they had moved there in 2013. When they'd moved, they had gotten several pets. Asha had got a job and started to work at a hotel, and she got also a job at a dog nursery. At the time, she had started using marijuana. Then in September of 2015, she had taken a trip to Los Angeles. When she had gotten back though, she had told her boyfriend that she wanted to make some changes in her life. She wanted to improve her relationship with people. She also wanted to get a driver's license. Her demeanor had changed when she did come back from that trip. She was very quiet and she seemed like she had lost her confidence. At times, she was optimistic in some cases, then she was very distant in others. She did talk about getting married and having kids, though. One of her friends were coming for a visit from back home. She was very nervous about it, and her friend was coming from Australia. Her name is Sally Scales. Now, Asha had insomnia. She could not sleep, and she kept waking up around 3 in the morning. I know how that is for sure. Before. She was sleeping all night long. Asha and her boyfriend had picked up Sally from the airport on September 16th for her visit. The following day, they went to a local market and Asha told them that she wanted to go in the car and sit. Then on September 18th, they all were in a house and Asha had came out of the bedroom. She said that she remembered a dramatic experience from her childhood. And this might have happened because they had been looking at photographs earlier when she was a child. After talking to her boyfriend, they both agreed that she might need to go see a therapist about this. Then on Friday, the following Monday, they wanted to get a place so that she can be treated about her experience that she suffered. After waking up on Saturday, she seemed very quiet and did not talk to anybody. Her boyfriend said that she was odd and creepy. When talking to her and asking her questions, she would just shrug her shoulders and rotate her hands with her fingers spread apart. She did seem paranoid. She had accused her boyfriend of cheating on her even. On Sunday, her boyfriend took Aja to the hospital in Fort Bragg. Aja had trouble with the mental professionals there. She was not cooperating at all with them. She had ran out of the hospital and they called the police before the police had got there. She had tried to enter two other cars that were being driven. When the police got there, they finally took her into custody. 
but it had taken three hospital workers, two police officers, a paramedic to get her restrained and take her to the hospital room. The doctors thought she was having a manic episode. They thought that she would be endangering herself or to others around her. They had committed her under the code 5150. This is a civil commitment law in California. Now, out of the blue, no reason, Aja had confessed that she murdered her neighbor, and her name was Joy May Taylor, but this was false confession. Joy was alive, and she was with her boyfriend, Eddie Ryan, and she was alive and well. Aja did not murder anyone at all. She did, however, make gestures that she would harm herself. The mental health doctors had discharged her, not know why, from the hospital. I didn't know why they did that. Without treatment or finding out what was going on with her mental problems. Even one worker told both of them to come back if you needed to. She shouldn't have left in the first place, I think. What kind of hospital would treat her that way? Why would they discharge her? I just wonder. To me, it seemed like they just wanted to get rid of her, maybe. Now, Gail and Sally had drove back to their home, and on the way home, she had tried to jump out of the car, even. When nighttime came, they were in bed, and Aja did not sleep. She didn't even get into her night clothes. Aja did not sleep, and she stayed fully dressed all night long. She got up and started the car a few times, even though she didn't have a license to drive. Then, at one point, her boyfriend caught her burning a piece of paper with a candle. That morning, Aja had left the house and went walking, and her boyfriend and Sally found her walking nearby. They had talked her to convincing her to come back home. They had found her next to the tree as she was watching them look for her. It didn't take long after coming back home. She had ran out of the house again without shoes, but within minutes, she did return home she rents on some gravel. They all went into the car to go for a drive. Her boyfriend and Sally thought this might help her relax. They had stopped for a bite to eat at Rollerville Cafe. This was located in Point Arena, California. While at the restaurant, Aja said very few words. She did not eat any food that she even ordered. Around 10.30 to 11, Sally had stood up to go to the bathroom. Then, within a few seconds after that, Aja went to follow her to the restroom, like she needed to go to the bathroom. Sally was unaware that Aja was behind her. She did not even see Aja in the restroom. Unknown to Gail and Sally, Aja had left the restaurant. Her boyfriend and Sally had went to look for her, but after they could not find her, they did call police about three hours later to report her missing. She was last seen wearing a gray hoodie, black skinny jeans, without shoes, no ID, no cash, or credit cards with her. Later, her jacket was found on the road leading to a lighthouse at Point Arena. Many thought it was Aja's, but Sally said she wasn't even sure if she was wearing a jacket at the restaurant. Her boyfriend found Aja's phone near her home. Weird. There had been many sightings of Aja, but none of them had been really confirmed. The police believed that Aja had went home to get her German Shepherd because her German Shepherd also was missing. The police also think that she is missing voluntarily and that she might be using an alias name. Now, Eddie Ryan, you know, Eddie Ryan, who was Aja's neighbors, the boyfriend of the girl that she said that she falsely killed, Eddie had come up missing also on September 1st, 2018. It was about three years after Aja had become missing. Is that a coincidence? Hmm. The police do not think so, that they don't think that they're connected in any way. But to me, this is kind of strange coincidence, don't you think? Now, Aja's mother, Jenny, does come out to California on occasion just to look for her daughter without success. Many have told her that they saw her daughter, but none have actually been confirmed. Jenny still has hopes to find her daughter, like any mother would. So what happened to Aja? It kind of looks like the Elisa Lamb case, don't you think? Aja had bipolar, 
and was off on her meds at the time she was caught on camera at the hotel in California. They both were in California, however, showing the same kind of symptoms that Elisa Lamke was caught on the elevator camera, showing the signs with the hand gestures like she did, and it seemed like she was really paranoid also. Are these cases connected in any way of them having the same symptoms? Well, I'll keep you updated on this case if I find anything out, guys. This is the end of this case on today. Tell me what you think, what happened to her? Do you think she was taken by a stranger or maybe even killed by one? Or do you think she took her own life because she was only a mile away from the ocean? Well, be kind in the comments, I'd love to hear them. And I'm off for another case. Take care and be safe. Until then, bye.